Are we at start time? Welcome to Unity of Walnut Creek. Great to have you with us today. We are going to touch into an ancient morning. Welcome to Unity of Walnut Creek. Today we're going to touch into an ancient traditional practice and explore the incredible potential for healing. But this service is really the opportunity to touch in great depth, that presence within yourself, that beautiful divine presence of light and love that is God. So during our time of meditation or during the service, let yourself enter into that stillness, that open place where you touch that presence of death. I hope our service lifts and bless you, and we know that your presence is a blessing to all of us. Thank you for being with us, and have a most beautiful day. Good morning and welcome to Unity of Walnut Creek. Please stand as you were able and join us in singing the welcome song. We've come to celebrate. We want to make you feel at home. And so we welcome you to Unity of Walnut Creek. Forget your cares and woes, leave all your troubles all behind. Just open up your heart, and we know you'll have a real good time. There's so much love and so much joy, you'll find whatever else you seek. You cannot help but fall in love with the unity of Walnut Creek. We've come to celebrate, we want to make you feel at home. And so we welcome you to Unity of Walnut Creek. There's so much love and so much joy, you'll find whatever else you seek. You cannot help but fall in love with Unity of Walnut Creek. We've come to celebrate, we want to make you feel at home. And so we welcome you to Unity of Walnut Creek. To Unity of Walnut Creek. To Unity of Walnut Creek. And continue standing, and we're going to now sing Oya Heya. Please join us. Oh, yeah, hey, 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 oh, yeah, hey
Welcome to Unity. Please excuse my voice today. It's a little bit deeper than usual. I am Mickey McCabe Walls, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this service. Let's all take a moment now, given our, our little cue there, to turn off those cell phones. Thank you. Beautifully, beautifully planned. And please also join me in welcoming our online friends. We welcome you to our service, and your, your presence adds to our community. Our song leaders today are Nancy and Chip Donovan. Did a beautiful job. Thank you. And, and please join me also in welcoming our own guest musicians today, Fusion featuring David Brooks. Well, let's open our service now by focusing on our intention through our opening affirmation. Please join me in prayerfully and powerfully speaking it together three times. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Let's take one more deep breath and say it one more time. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Let's continue by reading aloud the statement of our unity. God's love is within each of us, guiding us to dynamically express our wholeness, wisdom, and abundance. We all publish the universal wisdom in the Christ teachings and in all spiritual paths. I now choose to open to the presence of divine love and to be changed at depth. Throughout this sacred time, God is uplifting me and through my heart, the world. I'd like to invite Jeannie up to, to speak our daily word today. The word for today is grace. Some challenges in life seem insurmountable. I may be tempted to either give in or to give up for, on them. However, when I look to God as a source of my ever-present good, I am open to the circumstances of my life to divine grace. I can overcome anything when I remember that with God, I never have to face my challenges alone. 
I leave behind the shadow of doubt and enter into the sureness of God's grace. Any challenge looming over me shrinks to a manageable size. I no longer fear the future. I am enthusiastic about God's good, which is always ever present. I know good will come, I'm sorry, I know good will continue to manifest, and I am willing to accept whenever and however it appears. The scripture is Luke 1.30. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And the affirmation for today is, With a grateful heart, I accept the goodness of God. Together, with a grateful heart, I accept the goodness of God. Breathe that in and repeat. With a grateful heart, I accept the goodness of God. Please join us in singing, We Let It Be. Beautiful. I'm going to highlight a few upcoming events. The details of these and other wonderful activities are found on, in your bulletin and on our website. Unity Connects people, the ones with the funny hats, will be on the patio <laughs> to help you log in to our, to our database and communication program. They'll take your picture and upload it to your profile. See you on the patio. If you have volunteered in the past year, and we all know most of us in the room have, you are invited to the Unity Volunteer Picnic next Sunday after the last service. Great food and lots of fun. Join Reverend David for the membership classes if you are interested in joining our Unity community as a member, or if you are just interested in learning more about Unity. The dates and times are found in the bulletin and come to our Unity Rocks Around the, the Clock fundraiser on October 20th for out of sight food, primo play dates, kino, raffle prizes, and of course, fab music. 
Get your tickets, volunteer to help, or offer up play dates on the patio after service. It's going to be a gas, and I'd like to invite Reverend David up. Good morning. Classes begin this week, so it's that time of what is it that really calls to your heart to deepen and enrich that spiritual exploration. <clears throat> so let me just t touch on a couple. The, uh, on, on Monday nights, uh, Kathleen, Kathleen Sims has been uh, really working with that development of that creative consciousness coming forth in this 2012 experience. Wonderful opportunity connect, to connect with her and some of the work from some of the great teachers of our age in the, uh, the emergence process. And then Tuesday's just hard time. In the afternoon, the HeartMath book, book Club working with Hidden Power of the Heart and uh, working uh, in the evening at, the set at seven o'clock, we'll be doing we're looking at the sacred heart, that deep uh, spiritual nature of that connection that we make through the heart. We also have uh, spiritual gifts that evening. So Tuesdays are one of those days where you can fill up the absolutely the whole day just doing classes. Then on, on Thursday... Uh, exploring the chakras, understanding this beautiful system of spirituality that is a part of the, of the body. So with Sonia Marie, that wonderful opportunity, if you haven't had a chance or you're ready for that next step into the understanding of the chakra system. And on uh, Thursdays is also our next generation unity, our 18 to 35-year-old community getting together and exploring spirituality for them. Wonderful opportunity. And I, a deeply loved course here at Unity is Course in Miracles, which is Friday. So lots of choices, wonderful things happening, and it's all right to try and go to them all. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend David. If you are here with us for the very first time, we welcome you to our spiritual community. We would love to meet you and we invite you to experience our community as a guest of unity at a unity event of your choosing. Please take the very important presence card from the seat, pack in, seat pocket in front of you to our welcome table out, out on the patio to learn more about us and to receive your gift certificate. If you are willing, please raise your hand so we can acknowledge you we would like to expend, ex, extend to you our speci special blessing. Any new people? Well, I'm here for the second time, but I'll take another blessing. Excellent. <laughs> we'll, we'll do it. All right. All right. Well, together, we love, we love you, we bless you, you and, and we, we behold love. the light of God shining through you. Welcome. And thank you for joining us. Please take a moment until the music begins to greet each other. <laughs> yeah, you're sounding good. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> Baby, in her hand, she's got me. 
Take that deep breath, wiggle around, get comfortable, and today as we enter into that experience of prayer, I invite you to have that intention to really open, to let that true goodness of the divine just flow in and through every part of your life. As we turn within, begin that inner journey, I invite you to join in the music and let it be part of that guide to the very center of your heart. Oh, my people. divine presence is love. Knowing that love is the divine presence. Knowing that we are one and that that love would fill our beings with such goodness. Mother, Father, God, we are so grateful to truly be aware of your presence surrounding us, enfolding us, expressing as us. And so we open to let your goodness let your wholeness, let your peace awaken fully within our beings. As Jesus, our master teacher, guided us to understand 
this goodness that you would fill us with. As he said, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And he who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you, if he asks, his son asks for bread, would give him a stone? Or if his he asks for a fish, would give him a snake? If you then know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Will your Father give good gifts to those that ask him? And so we ask. Ask for that goodness to flow in and through us and fill every part of our lives and through our hearts to embrace all within our world, lifting them, blessing them, healing them for. That is what we seek, that wholeness in all things. And that is what we find as that which is true and present in our lives. Knowing this, how easy it is to step into that beautiful place of peace. That peace where we can gently let go. Where we can gently release and rest in that place of serenity. And from there we step into the sacred silence. That stillness of mind and openness of heart in which we simply rest at one with the one. Following that direction of the Master. Peace, be still. Peace. Be still. Peace. Be Mother, Father, God, infinite love, beloved presence, acknowledging that you are this experience of love that we find upon our hearts and that we can send this love to touch and bless and heal and uplift the world around us. 
We now make that choice to send this transforming love forth. And we begin with our own bodies to send it to every cell for healing and vitality and wholeness. We radiate it to each one who is dear to us, touching, lifting each one. We send this love from our hearts across the spiritual community, blessing and uplifting everyone in each life. We send this love to every prayer request that is brought here, knowing with each one that this divine love enfolds and surrounds and lifts them, bringing forth the very highest we radiate this love from our hearts. We send it across the communities in which we live, across our nation, healing its fears and bringing forth its great wisdom and compassion. And we send this love from our hearts to all who join us in prayer, whether in mosque or synagogue, temple or church, whether gathered at home or on the hillsides, for in seeking to know you, we are all one. And we send this love from our hearts to Mother Earth, to all her creatures, and we radiate it to the heart of every single person in the earth. For you are that love in every heart, and in that love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Please join me. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And once again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. each one is. Amen.
We are brave and we are strong. And in our heart we sing a song of the one source, the one who loves us all. you're not feeling your best, remember, take a breath, relax, rest, go within, be still, and know we are always in control, we are always in the flow, with the one source, the one who loves us all. My people, oh, my people, the world will always keep on turning. So keep your love light always burning with the one source. Who loves us all? And listen for that one voice, the one who loves us all. Thank you, David. You take me back to that beautiful experience of our World Day of Prayer and that, uh, that thing that we, we experience when we touch that presence in so many different ways. So I want to just check with you this morning. Are you feeling brave? Everybody fairly, fairly courageous this morning, ready to stretch a little spiritually, okay? You stay right there, but we're going to stretch a little bit. Ready, ready to try that? Okay, one of the things that I love about unity is that we, that we really recognize that within each spiritual tradition, there is tremendous wisdom and understanding that can help us under, understand and grow in uh, our relationship and expression of the divine and so I want to go to a spiritual tradition we haven't gone to before and take a look at something that it suggests. Now, if, we, if you look at how you pray, okay, for just a moment, think of, think of that experience of prayer. We were, we were in prayer here just a, a moment ago, and we, we were bringing to our awareness people that we love and care for. And most of us have somebody in our lives that is, is at a point of need right now. And so it's, it's a wonderful thing to be able to take and enfold them in that power of prayer. But how does that happen? I mean, how do you see it taking place? I, I know very often for me, so there, there's that sense of, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm in this place of prayer. I'm, I'm aware of this divine presence and... And I, so I want to extend it to that person. I want to re really in, enfold them with it. And in some sense, it's almost like calling forth from this sacred presence that is the very fabric of the universe itself, this response to them and, and, and to their need. And sometimes it, it's, it's a little different. It feels like it may just be my heart connecting with that heart. And that that love and energy flowing through us. Now, the tradition that I want to look at suggests that if there's transformation, it doesn't have anything to do with them. 
that the only thing we're working with is something in us that is expressing out as that problem. Now to, now to do this, okay, if we're going to look at this, you've got to be willing to invite that part of yourself that is so good at guilt to take the day off. Okay? Everybody willing to do that? Some of us are better at others. Some of us have been really trained well in it. So, you know, it may take a little more effort to say, okay, guilt creator, you, you get the day off. We're, you, you're not engaged here. We're, we're going to look at, at something a little differently. Okay? Everybody willing to, to do that? Because this is a, this is a fabulous understanding that within us, is that which can be transformed, released, let go of, whatever. And when we do that, the manifestation of that disharmony disappears. Okay, now, the, this actually comes from an ancient Hawaiian tradition. And it's, it is not that ancient tradition. It's actually a contemporary uh, understanding uh, brought forth by a, um, a, several teachers of their tradition over the last few years. But it's become quite, quite popular. Uh, there was a wonderful book that, it, that explored it. The, the tradition itself is called Ho'oponopono. And uh, the book is uh, Zero Limits. And it, it became of great interest because someone put it to the test. And the results of that are fascinating. So I want to take you into this, uh, this understanding and this, this experience. Okay, so here, here we have, uh, in, in the Hawaiian culture, this uh, tradition. And there was a man who inter interacted with, uh, out of a need within his own life, with uh, this tradition and one of the people there that uh, practiced it this way. And what he saw was amazing results. So he began to uh, learn it and work with it. And then he found himself in the position of being the psychologist at the state mental hospital for the war that dealt with the criminally insane. Now, I'm glad for those of you who haven't had the opportunity to inter part, interact with that part of the justice system. I have, and that's a rough place, folks. So I wanna, wanna give you a picture from one of the employees. It's actually talking about this, this man's presence and, and experience. Uh, what you experienced. The one that they went and in order to say was it this valid, there, there were a couple things because, you see, when this guy came to this, this place, this very violent, difficult unit, he didn't do anything. Now understand, he, he was a part of a, a, a belief system, said it's all in you, so if you believe that, why would you go out and do something? So he didn't do anything out there. But he did work within himself to transform whatever within himself was showing up. And this is just a little description from a, a woman who worked there as a social worker, what that appearance looked like. It was a state mental hospital in Hawaii, the closed intensive security unit for the criminally insane, okay? Uh, all were locked down in the unit 24-7, allowed to leave only when escorted in uh, wrist and ankle restraints, and only allowed out for, you know, medical or court appearances. Most of their day was spent in a seclusion room, uh, locked concrete walls, ceilings, locked bathrooms, no windows, and he were highly medicated, 
violent incidents were the expected occurrences. You said there were several at least each day. Okay, that's patients attacking staff, patients attacking other patients, patients attacking themselves or attempting to escape. It was an intense, volatile, depressing, and wild place to be. Imagine what it was like for the staff that worked there. Talked about going, you know, being against the wall to try and stay away from, from people so, so you weren't hurt. These, and these, these people are not only insane, but they had committed major crimes. Murder, rape, tremendously destructive. Okay, now, she shares the uh, experience of this guy coming and arriving there. Now, again, one of the things she says, he didn't do anything. Okay, he didn't work in therapy with the patients. He didn't have patient conferences. He didn't participate in any of the stuff that the staff did, you know, for the patients. He just worked in himself. He said he was a very nice man. They enjoyed him. Uh, about three, okay, several months after his arrival, things began to shift. Seclusion rooms began clearing. Patients were becoming responsible for their own needs and business. They also began participating in planning and implementing programs and projects for themselves. The unit became alive, calmer, lighter, safer, cleaner, more active, fun, and productive. Incidents of violence became rare. Three years. He was there just a little over three years. When he left at three years, all the patients got released except for two that were transferred somewhere else. Otherwise, the entire ward was healed. Wow. But he didn't do anything. But the inner work. So I want to share with you what he says. This is a the man's name is Dr. Hugh Lin. He says, I had to take complete responsibility within myself for actualizing the problems outside of myself. He said, I had to clean my own toxic thoughts and replace them with love. I had to clean my own toxic thoughts and replace them with love. There was nothing wrong with the patients. The errors were in me. Whoa. <laughs> now, interestingly enough, I returned. I've been aware of this uh, situation and... Uh, the experience there for a long time. I'm very interested in it. But what brought me back to it was looking at another man's work and how his inner work affected the world around him. It was Mahatma Gandhi. When they began the uh, experience of uh, demanding uh, freedom from England. The people of India embarked upon this nonviolent path. And shortly into it, a number of incidents of violence erupted. And so he said, we need to call this off. And the people around him said, you can't. He said, there's no, no way with this wave of energy and anger that's sweeping that anybody can do anything. Well, he said, I will fast to cleanse myself of that in me. 
which is contributing to that violence. Okay, now that's a little bit different than Dr. Hugh Lynn's talking about it. But the work is the same work. Now, when, when he says fast, yes, in, in his tradition, they, they would abstain, he would abstain from food. But the whole focus of that abstaining was complete focus and dependence on the love of God and that, that connection. It's a time of very deep, intensive focus prayer. And he did that. And the violence stopped. And then, again, there was a, a need to address the deep discrimination that existed between what they called the untouchables, okay, cast within the Hindu or the, uh, yeah, the Hindu uh, society. And he invited folks to work with it and brought public attention to it. And then he fasted to cleanse himself of that within him which contributed to that. And major changes happened. And then it, there was a, there's a third time that I'm aware of when at the, the point where uh, India was embracing its freedom, the tremendous violence that began to occur between Muslim and Hindus and his inability to stop that. And so what he did was enter into the fast. Again, this deep time of prayer, this deep inner experience of the divine love to cleanse himself of that within him which was contributing to that violence. A very interesting understanding here that within ourselves, the capacity by the transformation of the self to create huge change in the outer. And it, you know, and... When I, when I look at Dr. Hugh Lin's experience, something happened there. Now, he's very clear on the very, very core experience of what that was. And, and the way he says one enters into that experience is by the response to that which we experience. It begins, I love you. I love you. Now, interestingly enough, his focus is not the outer person, the outer thing. Because his perception is that this is all the expression of something within my consciousness. Now, it, that's not necessarily personal. Uh, very, very often uh, said, you know, it can, it can be something, some memory, some pattern, from, from our past, but it can equally be simply a part of the collective consciousness that we have taken on. So of that collective unconsciousness, there are patterns that are expressing in our world and that the transformation of that pattern, the release of that memory structure within the self, then allows the goodness that God is to flow through as healing, as wholeness, as abundance of whatever whatever that need is. And now there's a number of steps to this. And next week I'm going to take the time to go in and go through the steps so we can experience it at, at a little greater depth. But the core experience is this. I love you. I love you. I love you. Join me. I love you. I love you. I love you. Now go back to one of that. When you, when you were doing, wanting to do that prayer work for that person in your life. And respond to them together. I love you. I love you. I love you. Now take that response and bring it inward to whatever 
within the self is contributing to that discord. I love you. I love you. I love you. Now one more step in her. To that divine presence that has the power to release that pattern and replace it with its goodness together. I love you. I love you. I love you. So what do we know? One of the interesting things I find when I experience a different tradition that may hold a perception that has a, has a little different expression than maybe I've worked with before is that it's very important to me to honor it and not to figure it out. So what I find is helpful is in honoring it to bring it and simply hold it in my heart in neutral. Again, not, not saying yes, not saying no, but understand that as, as it is here, as I hold it in my heart, Spirit does its amazing work of in its right time and way, whatever is there in that understanding that can, that can feed or nourish or guide me will come forth into my awareness at the right time. So I invite you, with the, 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 the deeper we look into this understanding, there's some very challenging ideas there. Wonderful. Hold it in your heart. And let spirit, in its time and way, reveal to you that which is meaningful to you. <coughs> Is it right or wrong? Who cares? The only thing that is important is there's something in there that is meaningful to you. Now what we do know is that what we have been shown is the power of our love brings transformation into the world around us. That is clear at any level we want to look at it. The power of the love that you have impacts, touches, <coughs> makes a difference in the world around you and in the lives of those you care for. I love you, I love you, I love you. And I share this with you because I love you. Thank you, Reverend David. If you would like prayer support for challenges or celebrations, please ask our heart ministers. They will be available after the service here in the sanctuary and on the patio. Our heart ministers are wearing the lavender stoles. You are also invited to, play, to place a prayer request in our prayer box by the front door or in the book center or by choosing the prayer request button on our website. We will be praying with you throughout the week. It's time for our prosperity celebration. For love in action or credit card donations, Please use the envelopes provided in the back of each chair. I invite you to, t to now take your tithe or love offering in your hand and be aware that God is the source of all our good. Repeat our affirmation with me together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, I am truly grateful. Swing down, sweet chariot, stop and let me ride. Swing down, sweet chariot, stop and let me ride.
alone Standing in that field I'm looking all alone The lessons to be learned I swear that it's true Get in tune with God There ain't nothing we can do So won't you swing down sweet cherry And stop and let me ride Swing down sweet cherry And stop and let me ride Rock me Lord, rock me Lord Calm and easy I've got a home on the other side When Jesus was a man And he spoke upon the mount Healing and a teaching What love was all about Put that power in your heart, put that power in your soul, lift your eyes up to the hills, let the good times roll. Won't you swing down sweet cherry and stop and let me ride? Swing down sweet cherry and stop and let me ride. Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord, home and easy. I've got a home on the other side. God has a plan for each and every one. With lessons to be learned and deeds to be done. If you wait upon the Lord and listen to the clues, Lord, hallelujah, put on your dancing shoes. Won't you swing down to the chariot and stop it? Let me ride. Swing down to the chariot and stop it? Let me ride. Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord. is to enfold those beautiful young beings in our heart and bless them together. Children, you are loved, special, and important. God loves you, and so do we. Thank you, God. And we receive these gifts knowing that this infinite source of love and wholeness and abundance flows joyously and easily through all of our lives and all that we bring forth in his peace. Amen. So please stand and take hands and join me in our prayer of protection. <laughs> Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And our peace song.
are the love and the light and the peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun. Thank you.